Ja, jullie kennen hem zeker als de Engel, KSTL. 15 seizoenen lang, 327 afleveringen. Hij deed het 12 jaar lang, dus laat je horen voor de enige echte Misha. They're all very energetic. I'm very impressed. Except for these people. They seem to have, seem to have perished. All right. You don't have a severed head today. Thank you for that. Um, hi, everyone. I, I was um, scrolling around Amsterdam with all of the tourists last night. It was so fun watching people stumbling drunk. Um, maybe some of you were there. I don't know. Um, how, many, how many of you are feeling hungover this morning? Good, good. A smattering, yes. And a couple of children, I noticed. Um, I, uh, I was having dinner with, with some uh, friends in Amsterdam and, um, and they poured some wine for the adults and for the 10 year old. And I was like, oh, that's not legal where I live. It's very impressive. Um, like yesterday I was up here and I, I didn't get through the questions. So I thought maybe we could just start uh, asking questions sooner. <laughs> Great idea, I think. Can everyone in the audience please get in line here? <laughs> Hi. Um, so uh, I really love the song that you improvised with Jensen and Jim about Dean and Cass. Uh huh. Um, and I was wondering if you were ever gonna professionally record and release it, because I asked Jensen, but he told me to ask you, but he seemed like he was really up for it. I don't really remember that song very well. I think that is a lie, but I will show you. <laughs> um, I could show you if you want. Um, yeah, I think that we should probably... It's here. Um, You're gonna... Play it on the microphone! Play it on the microphone! Oh, shit. <laughs> Why Yes, we should definitely professionally record that. I think it would be nice to do something like uh, have Billie Eilish record it or something like that. Well, I mean, Jensen has a beautiful voice and you have a beautiful voice, so it works. Well, that's very charitable of you to say. <laughs> but I do think that it would be probably better to have Billie Eilish record the song. I don't mind, you know, whatever, as long as it gets released. Okay, great, all right, yeah. thank you, thank you. All right, we're, we'll, we're on it. Now Jensen and I have consensus, so we'll do it. Yes, okay. yes thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How are um, you? I'm, I'm fine, how are you? Good, thank you. Enjoy your night in Amsterdam? Yes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, I was wondering, of course you played Castiel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in case you forgot. Yeah. Um, but through the show we saw you play different characters within the same body, like uh, Jimmy Novak or Lucifer eventually and The Empty and I was wondering how what was it like for you to play these different characters within the show? Well it was one of the things that made Supernatural fun for me was that it wasn't always the same thing and even the character of Castiel was constantly evolving over time he went from being this real fish out of water to slowly morphing into even becoming a human, but certainly growing to know and understand humans better and love humans, like he, he changed a lot over time. So that was um, interesting to get to play, but it was also fun to be able to play all of the different versions of C Castiel over time, or the alternate universe versions. I think I, I, I may have made a, mistake in playing the Nazi Castiel. I don't know if you remember that, but that was a little weird. We did a few things and I was like, well, I don't know if that worked. I don't know if that was a good idea. Um, but yeah, it was all fine. 
playing Lucifer <clears throat> was probably the most fun of all of those characters. And when I, uh, when I saw the script, it was like, oh, now I'm picking up where Mark Pellegrino, who had played Lucifer on the show, left off. And Mark was actually in town filming something else. Uh, and I called him up and I was like, hey, could I come over and uh, cheat? Could you just tell me the tricks that you use to play Lucifer on Supernatural? So I went over to his house and Mark's wife and Mark worked with me for about an hour before I went in to film the first scene as Lucifer and he gave me some tricks that he uses when he's playing Lucifer on Supernatural. And he said, the main thing is in every scene, you, you just walk into the scene and you look at the other characters and, you, and I am always, as Lucifer, trying to decide, do I want to kill them or fuck them? <laughs> and that's a great little device to use. In fact, I'm, I'm doing it right now as I look around the audience. Okay, that was a weird way to, it's still the morning, I'm sorry. Um, thank you for your question. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, over the years, you have done a lot of charity work. Like, in general, you recently, of course, been to the Ukraine. What's the favorite charity work you ever did? Uh, my favorite charity work that I ever did I, I think the most, it's a little bit hard to say, but I, uh, because there have been a lot of projects and a lot of them have been impactful in different ways. There, uh, when, when we, uh, when I was running Gish, the scavenger hunt, um, we did this thing called gamifying, I called it, I came up with the term, gamifying good. So we basically folded into the game um, different charitable things that we were working on and kind of tried to, tried to find a way to make doing something positive for a group of people um, not feel like a chore but feel like a fun thing to do. And it was kind of remarkable because some of the things that we were working on were actually quite heavy topics, quite sad stories. Um, like we were buying farmland for a, a 500 Rwandan women who were genocide survivors. And it seems like a very heavy topic, but actually it was a beautiful thing and it was so lovely and they're still you know, working on this farmland where actually uh, Olive, who was sort of the leader of this, this group of women in Rwanda is coming to speak at the UN uh, in the fall and their farmland is absolutely thriving and it's completely changed the, the course of 500 women's lives. They're now, they're now farming the land that they own as opposed to be basically being serfs working on land that somebody else owns. Um, and there was a project that we did with Gish where there were Syrian refugees who were living in Lebanon and this family uh, that we found, um, working with Giles Dooley, who's a uh, war photographer in, in the UK, this family had been living in a tent for two years. The mother had been shot by a sniper at the top of her uh, spine, and so she was paralyzed from the neck down, and, uh, and they were in such dire circumstances that when we, put them in our scavenger hunt. The daughter had just, uh, the 12 year old daughter in the family had just tried to kill herself so there would be more food for the other kids in the family. And now that 12 year old is, has grown up and she's in medical school studying to be a doctor. And it was because we were able to fold them into this game and turn it into something. I'll, I'll, I will tell you one other thing that, was, that, that is coming to mind which is when I started Random Acts, which is a nonprofit that I started when I first got on Supernatural. I got on Supernatural, and then I got a Twitter account, and then I saw all of these fans like making beautiful needlepoint portraits of my face. And I was like, I love that there's all this creative energy, but maybe we could channel it in a slightly more productive direction than, than another needlepoint pillow 
of my, with my face on it. Which, by the way, is actually super important to have. <laughs> I have this needlepoint portrait of my face that a fan did. That she said it took 10,000 hours to make. And it looks like a photograph, but it's needlepoint. And I was like, what am I gonna do with this thing? Because it's a little bit weird to have your own face on a pillow, right? And then I realized, oh, I know what I'll do with this. And I put it on my son's bed. <laughs> and he puts it in the closet, and I put it back on his bed. And he puts it back in the closet, and I put it back in, on his bed. And this is a little dance that we play. Um, but, so I started Random Acts trying to channel some of that energy into other things, and the uh, first project I wanted to do was to, something really big and ambitious. I was like, we're gonna build an orphanage in Haiti af after the earthquake. And I didn't know if we would be able to pull it off. It was kind of a crazy idea, and in order to raise money for it, uh, I set up these trips where fans had to raise a certain amount of money to join the trip, but I would go to Haiti with like 30 fans who had each raised $5,000, and, and that's how we funded building this orphanage. Uh, but the cool thing about that was that a lot of the people that went on those trips, they thought they were going to just help this community in Haiti, but what ended up happening is a lot of the people that went on the trips realized, oh, this is totally changing me, changing my perspective on the world, and a lot of the people that went on those trips to first to Haiti and then to Nicaragua ended up like staying in Haiti and Nicaragua for six months uh, or a year and continued and set up their own nonprofits and continued to do a lot of work, um, which was a really cool thing to see. Um, it was actually that the impact went both ways. The people that thought they were making contributions were actually getting changed themselves, and I thought that that was pretty. Uh, it was not totally unexpected, but really wonderful to see. Yeah, I yeah. think if you can change the system uh, by inspiring people, in the end, that's the best charity you can do, and then more people will do charity. Well said. <laughs> Couldn't you. agree with you more. Thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for all the random acts of kindness. Oh, thank we you We need more much. of those in this world. Um, you've played many different parts, uh, but I'm very curious to know if you could pick a part from a play or a film or a book, which one you would really love to play, and that you haven't played yet. <laughs> uh, there's a play uh, by, a, by a playwright called uh, Larry Shu. That's, the play is called The Foreigner, and I feel like it would be a awesome thing to adapt into a movie. Um, so that's one that, I, that comes to mind. But you probably don't know what the, that play is, so it means nothing to you. No, um, I, was, I was immediately thinking of the film The Foreigner with uh, Jackie Chan. Oh, I haven't seen this. It's amazing. Maybe it's already been done. It, it's it's um, um, Jackie Chan plays um, a veteran who moves to the UK and then his daughter dies in a, in a bomb attack by the IRA, is that the...? Not at all the story that I... <laughs> Good, it hasn't been done. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna watch it anyway, because I love Jackie Chan. I, I will look up your play. The okay. Foreigner by... Larry Shu. Larry Shu. Yes. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, if you were a mode of transportation, which one would you be and why? <laughs> I think that might be one of the best questions I've ever gotten. Uh, I would definitely be a hot air balloon. Because I'm full of hot air. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that is probably the most original question I've ever heard. Yeah, that's very impressive. Hi. Hi. Uh, I was wondering, um, we all have our favorite shows. What is your favorite show or movie? Hmm. Uh, I, I love a lot of different shows. Um, and I love watching shows with my kids. Um, my kids, uh, for some reason, like a lot of the same things that I like. Um, my, uh, my kids like Larry David, um, which is a little bit weird, I think. 
Um, I watch inappropriate things with my children uh, sometimes, and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> please don't tell your mom we watched this. Um, but we watched this show recently that I thought was just genius. Have you seen um, Jury Duty? Not yet. It might m more resonate with an American audience, but it was a brilliant, it was a brilliant show. I, it's, it's sort of a prank show. Um, you like, did you ever watch the Ali G show? No. What the fuck? Uh, come on, man, Sasha, go ahead, Ali G. Yeah. Um, Borat, anybody? <laughs> uh, you should watch the Ali G show. All right. That's your homework. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, um, my question is, you have many hobbies. Which yes. one is your weirdest? My weirdest hobby? Where is None of your business. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Um, it involves bondage tape. Um, is that a piece? This is bondage oh, tape. Here. Yes, it's left over. Um, I don't know if I have a good answer for you, but I I do like learning how to do new things with my hands, like. Uh, It's only 10.45 in the morning. Already you're talking about bondage. Shame on you. So, uh, for example, I, um, for my, my brother got married and I was like, I want to make him something. And so I made a mortar and pestle. Do you know what that is? Where you grind. But I made it out of marble. And I had to learn how to like carve marble. Which is, you, all it was was a little fucking bowl. And it took me like two months. It's, I don't know how they made those giant, like Michelangelo made these fucking marble statues. It was, it's very difficult. Um, so I like learning how to do new things like that. And what that ends up meaning is that I'm like mediocre at a million different things, but not excellent at anything. That's kind of a shame. You're the same way? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. I do. You do? I feel you in that. You do, okay, yeah. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good to know you know you like bondage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got about 10 minutes left. Hi. Hi. Um, last year with Ben Barnes, we, have, we had a bit of discussion. I think Brain Power might remember that. Um, someone asked if he put the milk or cereal first. So, did you put the milk or the cereal? <laughs> Put the milk or cereal first? I, I've gotten this question before, and I think it's absolutely ludicrous that anyone asks it, because of course you put the cereal in first. You have to be a total monster to do it any other way. You put the milk in the bowl, that's actually to like totally perverse. Why? <laughs> no, but really, mother, why? My mother always used to do like So it's like, like intergenerational trauma. <laughs> Your mother would pour milk into the bowl and then add cereal? But even as a child, wouldn't you look and say, what the fuck are you doing? What's wrong with you, mom? You didn't ever question it? No, not really? really? Well, now you're questioning it, right? Can I change it? Just go to it. You should. Because you should Ben Barnes also said I'm a psychopath because of it. Like it is a, that's, but that is one of the, the hallmarks of psychopaths. Can yeah. I change that? That's all they should ask when somebody is accused of murder. It's like, we don't know if you did it, but if you, are you the kind of person that would put milk in the bowl before the cereal? And if the person says yes, you're fucking guilty. Put them, put them in jail. Um, who else does this? One person on the left side. Is, is this the section where everybody puts it stays more crispy? What the fuck are you talking about? Ah, uh, this is really upsetting. I'm not gonna try it. No. If you try putting the milk first, I'll try putting the cereal first.
I'm not gonna do something that's wrong. <laughs> Sorry. No. I, I will still try the surgery first. I knew you would. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, is there anything you would like? Oh, you would like to do, change or do differently in your career if you could right now? What would I like to do differently in my career? Yeah, like in the past. Uh, oh, in the past? Yeah. Sorry. Um, you mean like, would I have made different choices? Yeah. Sure, <laughs> I would have made different choices. I'll tell you a story. Um, I was, do you know the show Star Wars? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I was in the running for the role of the young Anakin Skywalker. I was, uh, I was 25 years old and I had done very little acting work at that point. And I went in for an audition, and the audition was very weird. The casting director just had a, like a little camcorder like that on a tripod, and she just sat down, and I sat down, and she asked me about my childhood and my life, and I told her stories about growing up, um, how we were like really poor and we lived in tents and I kind of learned how to fix cars and build things because I had to um, and I started making money when I was like nine years old and um, and I sort of just told the story of my childhood and which is actually a very unusual childhood like we hitchhiked around the country and um, and got in a lot of trouble and I stole groceries and you know it was an unusual childhood and so I told these stories, and she was like, uh, this is perfect. Like, this is maybe the guy that we want for the Anakin Skywalker role. So then, my agent calls and says, um, we, uh, the, George Lucas wants to meet you. Um, so you have to go up to Skywalker Ranch, which is north of San Francisco, and meet with George Lucas. And I was very excited. My agent said one thing, you cannot tell anyone about this audition because at the time there was this big question, who was in the running for the young Anakin Skywalker role? And it was like front page stories in, you know, Entertainment Weekly and People Magazine is like wondering who might be the next Anakin Skywalker. So when I flew into the airport, I had to tell the driver who was taking me to Skywalker Ranch that I was going there to do a recording session for some music thing. Like, I, they, they gave me the lie to tell, and I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. And just put the fear of God in me, they told me that when they had cast the little kid, like the seven-year-old uh, Anakin Skywalker, he had told someone that he got the part, and they fired him, and the kid that's in the movie was their second choice. So I was like, all right, I'm not telling anyone about this. And went up, this is the thing that I would change about my, my career, this one moment. Went up, I got there a little early, and I went, up, went on this like walk uh, around the grounds of Skywalker Ranch, which is like this beautiful college campus. And there was like, this, I remember being up against this uh, barbed wire fence and there were these llamas that were coming down the hill and like I was feeding the llamas grass out of my hands and I was like, this is so amazing what's happening here. And then I went in and I met with George Lucas and it was just me, George Lucas, and the casting director in the room. And since the casting director was there, I, she was like, tell the stories about your childhood. But I was like, my, my stupid 25 year old brain was like, well, I don't wanna tell the same stories I told her before. But the reason that she brought me there was to tell those stories. And so I ended up talking about the architecture of Skywalker Ranch. And it was really cool. I got to play with um, Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, like from the real movie, and it had this heft to it. And I'm like standing there with George Lucas and, and Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. And, um, and I, I remember I left that audition, and as I was leaving, I was like, shit. I didn't tell any of the, like, I didn't do the thing that I needed to do to get that part just now. And that, I've always had a little bit of regret, because I think I would have been a good Anakin Skywalker. But, the story goes on, so, I had to, I had to fly home, but I, there was a couple of hours before my flight, 
And so it was about an hour drive back into San Francisco and I had the driver just, I was like, well, I'm gonna just hang out in San Francisco for a little bit instead of going to the airport right, right away. And so I went to the hate district and I was walking down the street and I had my phone in my pocket and I wanted to call my best friend to tell him, like, I was just playing with Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, but I was like, no, 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 Misha, don't do it, don't do it. They said, don't tell anyone. But then I went into this little pizza place to get a slice of pizza and there was this pimply faced teenager behind the counter and, and I was just like, shit, kid, I just have to tell somebody, I have to tell somebody. I was just in George Lucas's office playing with Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. And, and I'm like, I'm one of the finalists for the young Anakin Skywalker role. And he was like, no way, that's amazing. You know, my parents own the llama farm adjacent to Skywalker. My cousin is Natalie Portman. <laughs> and then he said, what's your name? And I was like, Misha Collins? For some reason, I just blurted it out. And I left with this limp piece of pizza, and I walked a block down the street, and then I walked back in, having taken not a bite out of the pizza, and I was like, Please don't tell anybody that I, <laughs> it was just like, the one person that I shouldn't have told is the person that I told. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, that's the final question. We got about 30 seconds left, but we'll make it happen. Hi. What's going on with your, with your trench coat? Wow. Whoa. I love it. That's wow. awesome. So Oh, I feel like I'm going to pass it, but um, uh, so obviously... She's you're... holding you up. It's fine. Okay. Uh, so obviously your character Castiel doesn't sleep, um, but of course Sam and Dean do. But what do you think Castiel does when he's alone in the boat while the boys are asleep? It's pretty creepy what he does, actually. He stands over them while they're s sleeping um, and leers at them. It's really creepy, actually. The Sam and Dean actually had to put like new locks on their doors in their bedrooms <laughs> and lock it from the inside when they go to bed at night so that Castiel doesn't come in and just like creepily drool over them while they're sleeping. <laughs> Cass was a really creepy roommate. The one good thing is he could tidy up while they were sleeping, you know, because he had all of those extra hours. And, like, what the fuck did Cass do all night long? The bunker was always fairly clean, you'll notice. And I don't think Sam and Dean were doing a lot of, like, housework. And there was never maid service coming in, you'll notice. But there wasn't even dust on the shelves. What's that? Season 15 with um, Miss Butters. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Great, the last question and I fuck it up. Um, thank you for your question. Yeah. So everybody, before we say goodbye to Misha, be sure to go visit him at the guest square for signing and pictures and all those things. But Misha, how do you like Utrecht? How do you like the Comic Con? I think it's great. It's great, right? I love it, yes. These people are very friendly and very tall. <laughs> so everybody, we're gonna finish this, up, finish this up the right way. We're gonna do a video with all of you and Misha right now. Yes! So get in the shot. Everybody, hold on.